above Frisco and the 10 mile range reaching down towards Breckenridge and Hoosier Pass across Lake Dillon. Really cool place to be on a Tuesday afternoon in a new little car. Uh, going back to Aspen to do what it is that I do and that I love, which is share this beautiful world with you guys. Here to tell you guys, uh, I've been driving through here for going on a decade? I don't know, a long time. Um, there's not enough snow for it to be February 2nd. Uh, I've got a lot of thoughts about it, but I'm just going to start with objective truth. I'm here to tell you that there is a change in the average snowpack that I've seen in the high Rockies of Colorado just uh, in the time that I have lived and traveled through here. Anecdotal, <clears throat> uh, perhaps, it's my experience, but a lot of people do agree with me. Uh, folks that have either lived here all their lives or at least you know for the 10 plus years that it would take to see the trend yeah, it, that's the trend. It's for real. Uh, climate change, global weirding, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's no copping out of it being reality. And it's going to jeopardize the lifestyle and livelihood of a lot of us in the outdoor industry. Um, as far as like a hit home um, for short term implications, but uh, the long term implications, as you might imagine, are much greater and more grim. I think we need to start talking about that with the same amount of fear and guilt uh, and fervor that we are uh, the virus. COVID-19 edition C or wherever we are, if it's not actually COVID-20 yet. <laughs> But yeah, more on that if you want to catch up on like what viruses are and how that stuff actually works. Um, we're going to be talking about that stuff too uh, from an objective truth standpoint. Like what cutting edge science is proving to be objective truth. Um, and if you're coming from a place of science is bad or science is anti-religion, uh, therefore you're not open to it. Man, I've, I've got something for you as well because... As it turns out, uh, science and spirituality are not mutually exclusive. They are they're just different people's different attempts at explaining the inexplainable. The effing miracle of life, of existence. Um, and the tragedy and suffering that comes along with it. The why. Uh, it's same, same, different. And the quicker we can all start to understand that, the uh, the quicker we might be able to get on the same page, pretend that we're not videoing and driving past that highway patrolman. Sorry, highway patrol distracted me. But the quicker we can get on the same page, the quicker we can perhaps uh, not ruin this whole beautiful thing uh, within the next few generations. And I say it that way because I believe it's a real possibility. More evidence here on Vail Pass that this is an absolute deficit snow year. Uh, going right across the top of Vail Pass up here to the DOT shed where there's likely to be another highway patrolman sitting around. So we're going to make sure we're doing 65 and not holding the camera up in the uh, window. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, if we actually stopped fighting about whether or not climate can change and accepted that we're seeing objective uh, evidence that it is changing, um, whether it's for the first time or it's a cycle, like, it still is not going to bode well for human existence if it, like, changes to extremes that we can't habituate uh, to, um, that we can't adapt or evolve to withstand if that makes sense. That's what happened to the dinosaurs, remember? Like, they could eat, bite our heads off, but they uh, they couldn't adapt to 
the ice age that ensued after an asteroid hit and a lot of volcanoes erupted and all kinds of other crazy shit was going on with uh, the Earth's evolution itself. Um, you know, like the Earth is evolving still. That's a continual process. And uh, we are having an effect on it. Like we are evolution. <laughs> if you're on my Grand Canyon trip last uh, year, let me uh, let me hear you say you get it. Check that out. I mean, just bare dirt on the south-facing slopes here, coming down the west side into Vale. Um, that should be like three feet and skiable, and no little trees like that visible at all. Um, I can look up some stats. We can get data and uh, include it. Hold your breath for that. Paul Ritz about to learn to make cool multimedia productions where when I get back to uh, a more stable work environment, I'll get you some empirical evidence, I think we call it, to go with my anecdotal evidence you know, of my life lived and my observations. And then if we could get together on it, uh, you know, we can talk about where we want to steer this thing. First thing is uh, we got to stop wreaking havoc on water systems um, our rivers and our oceans the whole thing right? but you really have to kind of get into understanding the world as one organism uh, to understand that water as uh, you know like our lifeblood uh, collectively I mean it's kind of neat I think without looking up real accurate statistics which I'm happy to do if somebody wants to call me out if I'm way off on the ones off the top of my head but like Dr. Spock I'm probably not that far off um thanks Dave Selby for that idea uh the world's like 70% water and uh the human body's like 70% water I mean I don't know guys that does not seem like a coincidence to me not ironic. Maybe everything is scalable after all. And uh, that's what I'm pitching, man. Like, we are just destroying our blood stream itself, our, our lifeblood, at a rapid rate. And all kinds of other things that are going on in that cycle that are causing a change in climate that is different from the, the cyclical climate change that we've seen prior to industrialization modernization modern society and if we want to keep doing it uh, like you know keep being in the human experience and alive we need to get our shit together I believe and uh, if we don't we don't and that's okay too I mean kind of like with COVID and me not personally being that afraid of dying um, I like I'm not that afraid of living out the end days of humanity with you guys either I'll do my best to to fill whatever role needs to be filled um, and if you think that's crazy and uh, morbid or far out there uh, well ask yourself if it really is and yeah let's have a real conversation about it uh, that's what I that's what I'm here for like we all kind of want to know like, how did we get here? Why are we here? Um, oh, more cops on the side of the road. Check speed to 65 and merge left to give space. Super pro. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, it's a cop wrecker. That's badass. This is a real thing. Mountain recovery with the blue and reds. He's cool. Ah. Oh, we're going to stay in the left lane. Um, and back to that thought of, yeah, um, I think what I might really be here to do is to be a part of that conversation and be part of, um, you know, trying to lead us in a, a, a direction. <laughs> wow, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. What direction do you guys want to go in? Like, do we want to have another, like, say, 80 to 100 years of, like, woo! just like I was living my 20s or are we ready to be like yo if we don't check that shit we're gonna be dead uh, a lot sooner than necessary I mean I had to figure that out for me 
and uh, you know, I, I have some serious life consequences of you know it taking as long to figure that out as it did. I mean, I think being uh, being where I am health wise, living with type one diabetes is part of that. But as Dominique Betramal pointed out just a minute ago, uh, not literally, but figuratively, a minute ago, where would I be if it was not for uh, finding that challenge to give my life a little purpose? <laughs> Anyways, uh, pretty, it seems like a, a, a legit challenge to take on to try and get uh, as big a conversation going about our collective health, uh, humankind. Uh, and the earth, like all of existence, all of life, the, the health of all life on this little rock that we can affect, to get us together on a conversation about that with the same fervor and uh, frenetic energy as we have over one of the innumerable viruses that are being breathed by all of us every second right now. Not just COVID-19, the one that's given us all a scare because it's taken out people that are otherwise already kind of unhealthy. But like the 10 to the 32 times more viruses that are in every breath we're taking, that's 10 million or billion? I can't even remember. 10, 10 million at least more than all the stars in the heaven. Wrap your heads around that. It's not the virus that we need to be uh, so wound up about, guys. It's the imbalance that our species is currently creating with the rest of life. Um, and that's what the virus is actually all about. And guys, I know that uh, the controversy over COVID and what it really is is a hot topic. Um, just like climate change and what we're doing and should be doing or shouldn't be doing has always been a hot topic. I, I hope that you can receive my message tonight with an open heart space and an open mind uh, space. And I encourage you to share. Um, if we're going to do something different, we've got to get a lot of people on board. And um, I'm willing to be the one to take the risk of being uh, one of the ones to put it out there. But I need you guys to get on board. And we need to get everybody to get on board hope you're interested in doing that with me. Um, in the meantime, my journey back to uh, my little camper home in Aspen is almost complete, which means that this broadcast is complete. I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Much love uh, and hopefully some more snow. We'll see you guys in the future. Bye-bye. It's a mystery to me. We have agreed which we have agreed And you think you have to want more than you need Until you have it all You won't be free Society You're a crazy breed I hope you're not lonely Without me Want more than you have, you think you need And when you think more than you want, your thoughts begin to bleed I think I need to find a bigger place